Hey, it's Aaron Gemmel, host of the Hot Seat Sports Talk here. Been out for a little while, but we're back for Season 7, Episode 6. Guest starring, starting Central Michigan's quarterback, Daniel D. Rich Richardson. Great interview, great guy, all on the way. Opening credits, let's go. <laughs> from originally and did you play other any other sports when you're in high school uh I did not play well I'm from Miami Florida uh I did not play any other sports in high school in middle school I did I played basketball uh when I was little I also played t-ball um I ran track as well in high school I did all right so around what year in high school did colleges uh start reaching out to you for football well, when I was in the eighth grade, I actually got an offer from FIU, the team we just beat. Um, <laughs> but um, going into my ninth grade year, school started reaching out, and then tenth grade year started progressing. I mean, my height was a bit one of the biggest thing. You know, a lot of college coaches were, I don't know, a lot of coaches said about me. But you know, you know how it is nowadays. It's not about how tall you are and everything. It's about no. you to play. So. So when you took, when you, um, so when did Central Michigan reach out to you? Um, actually, right after the second round of the playoffs, we had lost or whatever, and I was trying to decide what school I was going to. And Coach Mack got the head job I, uh, at Central, and then he reached out to my coaches back at home. And he remember, he remembered me actually from the Florida camp uh, back when he was at the University of Florida, and we used to come up there for 707, so that's how he remembered who I was. Okay, and so when you when you're up here at Central Michigan, and you know what was what, like the reason that you chose Central out of all the schools that offered you something, uh, was it for you know not only for academics, as you know as well as, as academics, uh, it was Central just yes, I love the campus, I love the community. Was that your deciding factor? Well, I mean, I came up here. It was kind of cold. I came up here in December. I got a, a late visit. It wasn't really much going on. I mean, the season before wasn't all, all that great. But I just felt like the coaching staff that was coming in and the players that was coming in my class and whatever, felt like we could have a change to the program. And I just went from there. Now, real quick, now, when you came up in December, being from Florida, was that kind of a shock with, with all the yeah, snow? Yeah, actually, the that was my first, yeah, that was my first time seeing snow when I came up here, actually. So that was, <laughs> it was actually pretty cool. I mean, just wearing some, wearing some different type of shoes, boots and stuff, wearing a different type of jacket, pretty much. Yeah, so that definitely, definitely uh, was probably a different taste um, than a very nice, comfortable South Florida weather for sure. Um, so uh, in 2019, when you were a freshman, uh, you know, Quentin Dormady, David Moore, Tommy Touchdown Lazaro were in the quarterback room with you. Um, what did you learn from those guys, not only in the on the practice field, but off the field as well from those older guys? Well, a lot of, a lot of the older guys, I mean, it was, it was great, you know, getting everybody different personalities and different states people come from. I mean, Quentin was from somewhere different. David was from somewhere different. Tommy. And everybody had different personalities. So you could talk to different people different ways. And they all three of them played a lot of football. And I was just a freshman. And I was just, you know, listening to them about just how the game goes. I mean, on academic piece and just the football reality piece, just, you know, knowing like where your number one read is, number two read is, you know, I was just a young guy, you know, back in high school. I mean, we had reads, but, you know, sometimes it was just, okay, this dude run a go route, let's throw it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. just learning from those guys actually helped me build my confidence as well. So Yeah, that's, def that's great to hear because that quarterback room was definitely uh... – it was it was it was a well put together quarterback room for that type oh, of yeah. season, and yeah. um, in 2019, not only was it your first season, well, like you said, it was Coach McElwain's as well. And what were your thoughts on the way he just took control of the program and guided you guys to to a MAC title game appearance and then ultimately a bowl game? I thought he did an awesome job. I just like the way how he's very family oriented, uh, just keeping us as one. You know. 
we all we got and we all we need pretty much the thing the slogan he says pretty much and action your action speaks louder than your words so just coming to play every day and you know the details of everything just starting in the locker room you know he's been preaching that since 2019 and then you know we was in the trailers so we had gotten new locker room or whatever, but we we're in the trailer. So, you know, we we're just grateful for a lot of stuff. Now we have a brand new locker room and it's just a lot yeah. going over the fact, you know, cause they, they had the old locker room and it was, it was okay. You know what I'm saying? And we went to the trailers and that was a big change. Watching <laughs> film in the trailers, taking showers in the trailers, and then going into this magnificent, you know, facility. So it was, it was awesome. He did a great job. Yeah. Take, you know, what were your first overall, um, you know, your first overall, overall thoughts when you saw the Champion Center, just everything from your locker rooms Man. to your new meeting rooms, your weight room, everything. It was, it was amazing. I mean, I remember when they, they took us in before uh, before it was fi- officially done. They took us on a little tour, and everybody was like, "Man, we can't wait till it's done." And when they when they showed us, man, we were we were really shocked about everything. Just the like the training room, the weight room, the nutrition center, like the team room, everything is just you know organized just perfect how we how we like it. Yeah, because definitely because your first your first season uh, as a chip, it was just a huge pile of dirt and just poles that were in that end zone and just a little scoreboard on that end. So seeing it come all full circle is you know it's just unbelievable what they have done. So go in that 2019 season, you know, tell me and the viewers about what the scene looked like going to that MAC title game in Detroit against Miami, Ohio, which you guys are playing this weekend. Um, and what were the and what were the week's festivities that looked like, you know, for that for that MAC game and before the New Mexico Bowl against San Diego State? Repeat the question. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Oh no, you're okay. Um, you know, what, what was the like scene like the fest pre the pre-week festivities, like, um, before the Mac oh, okay. game and before the bowl game in New Mexico against San Diego? Oh, every, everything pretty much was the same. You know, we had a different approach as like it was a championship game, you know, everybody's still treated us the same. I mean, we went as the week, uh, we actually, I think, uh, I'm not sure if we stayed the day before or two days before, but yeah, everything was fine. You know, we went to the Detroit and I mean, it was it was a fun experience just being in that stadium, actually, an NFL stadium. Um, I mean, you know, we always want to come out with the win or whatever, but it was awesome. We could see Canada from the other side where we were standing at. So that was another thing. I never seen Canada before. So yeah. yeah, so that was awesome. And then the bowl game festivities was fun, you know, mingling with the other team at I think what did, I want to say David and Busters it was. And uh, or both, oh, one of them, I can't remember, but um, that was pretty cool. And it was a different experience just being in New Mexico. I'd never been and in a time difference and everything. So uh, that was, it was both was a, a fun experience, basically, I would put it. Well, for sure, I know for a fact that, you know, getting back to that scene at Ford Field is the number one goal, not only for you, but the entire Correct. team this season and the entire mindset of Mount Pleasant as well because we want to get back there because last year was a little bit different. The entire structure of that season changed and, you know, the whole wide world, the boot was under a different change, you know, cut for season was cut in half from 12 to six, all max schedule, three home, three away. Every game was on a Wednesday, no fans. Tell me how you felt as a player about no fans at these games and the overall, overall format of that COVID season. Well, just knowing going into the game that we had to bring our own energy. Like the fans wasn't there. So we know that it ain't gonna be a lot of crowd noise. It ain't gonna be this. So, I mean, most of the plays, like even though we had the signals, we could just yell stuff out, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was, a, that was awesome. I mean, that was awesome. I mean, just calling everything out. We could actually play a little faster because nobody can hear us, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the, the biggest thing was just making sure that we can lift each other up for something happening. Because, you know, you ain't got the crowd to, oh, come on, you guys, cheer you on, you know, when things going good, you know, when things going bad, it might be quiet, and defense might make a book play, and then, oh, all of a sudden, sudden change. But it was just basically, you know, having having energy and uh, having each other's back. Yeah, so what were, you know, what were the pro- COVID protocols and testing like for you guys this season? I could probably imagine well, we had it to was get... probably so tight. Yeah, so I, you know, the Michigan Michigan governor, she, I think she changed it like six times a week. So we were getting tested uh, just about every day, 
and accept, accept the game day, of course. But we were getting tested every day, and we just had to make sure we had our masks on and meetings everywhere we went. And then, like, you know, classes was online, so we yep. were either home or we were at the school, and we just had to make sure we had our mask on at all times. That was pretty much the main thing, main focus. And watch, they made sure hand sanitizers was everywhere after practice, you know. We just we had to keep our masks on during practice, lift it down. It was just a lot. Yeah. So in that in that COVID season, 2020, you would, you know, you make four out of the six starts of that season. You'd have a great season. I would, you know, go and read off the stats, but you already know what your stats were probably from that season. So with all the successes that you guys had bearing all the conditions, you had to play around. How would you rate your performance for the 2020 season heading into 2021 with uncertainty, you know, of the world and, you know, your status on the roster? Yeah, I thought I, I thought I did did okay. I mean, I thought I could help the team a little better. You know, my injury, I thought I thought it was serious, but it it wasn't as serious as I thought. I thought I could have got up on the field, you know, and, and still finish out the year or whatever the case may be. The goal is always to win a championship. That that's Absolutely. always the main goal. And I feel like this year is the year that we can win a championship, and we have the players to do it. We have uh we have multiple quarterbacks, multiple running backs, multiple receivers, multiple linemen, multiple every position. You name it, we have it. And I just feel yeah. like uh, the coaches prepare us well. And this week is starting one and zero. That's it. That's yeah. that's the approach every week. Just winning one and zero. Absolutely. So now, so now, Daniel, this is uh, one of my favorite segments I do with everybody that I've uh, interviewed for my show. It's called Rapid Fire Seven. Mm-hmm. Just seven ra- random questions. Just to get to know you. Not necessarily related to football. Some are. So just really quick responses. So what is your favorite song to listen to on game day? Oh, man. Uh, what, what, what song do I listen to? Yeah, I can't even think about it. Sometimes I don't listen to music. Put it like that. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, favorite- I like watching a movie. <laughs> wow. I, that's, that's probably the most unique answer I've heard out of every football player that I've interviewed to this point, that is, wow. That is very interesting. Um, so what movie would you go watch? And what would your favorite uh, movie of all time be? I'd probably write Drumline. Okay. Yeah, I just like that. And it's like, you know, the football game and the band and everything, how everything play out. I just like, I like actually watching the ending. It gets me tight. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm not kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm a music guy, but I uh, you know, game day is a little different. Yeah, game day is a little different. Okay. <laughs> uh, favorite place to travel, favorite place traveled in college so far as a as an opponent? Uh, LSU. Okay, we'll get we'll get to that one. We'll get to them in a second. Um, so if you could play for any NFL team right now, who would it be? <laughs> Miami Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> Hometown. All right. I love I like it. Uh, your favorite food? Uh, ribs. My man, barbecue. Love it. Favorite place to eat in Mount Pleasant or on CMU's campus? Uh, I would like to say which, which it's on campus. Which, it's which, which. okay. Which, which. Yeah. yeah. And finally, uh, Madden or 2K? Madden. All right. Yeah, I'm the Madden guru. <laughs> 100%. All right, so that's the end of that segment, uh, Daniel. So now heading into this season, talking 2021, you guys went down to Missouri, yeah. lost 30, lost by 10. You had one touchdown off of one pass attempt. Now tell me what we were, how you were feeling, how the team was feeling going into an SEC country and running a full house again, getting used to the fans Man, that, again. It was, it was, it was a, that now that was an awesome experience as well. Other than LSU playing another SEC team, going into the week we prepared. I mean we. We were well prepared, you know. Of course, we want to come out with the win. We played hard, but my nah, it was a great experience. I felt like the team, the team did well. You know, you always want to come out with the win, but you know, we had a couple missed plays here and there. But you know, we the next week we came out and and did what we had to do. Absolutely. So now you guys would come back and crush Robert Morris forty five nothing in fo- in front of the Mount Pleasant and Chippewa faithful, um, where you had a very strong game, and then you guys went back to SEC country to play LSU. Um, mm-hmm. Now take me through game day first against Robert Morris and being at home in front of the fans, having all the pregame festivities back in Mount Pleasant. It was, that was awesome. You're talking about LSU? At home, at 
against uh, RMU. Oh, Robert Morris. Oh, that was that was awesome. I mean, just uh, being back home because you know you, we never lose at home. That's that's always the goal. <laughs> yes. you never lose at home. And it was just it was just amazing to see how many people showed up that day, and you know the festivities they had and everything. It was it was an awesome experience. It's, it's because like the fans and just you know us you know us the be everybody students it doesn't matter. We all missed seeing yeah this football, football team out there and playing and winning, of course, at home. Because like you said, we never lose at home. Um, Correct. And, and so now take me th- – when you guys went back to LSU, you guys had a very interesting day when you guys played LSU. Yeah, I mean, we, I left, the, we left the day of – we left the day of – I mean, we, we weren't as drowsy. They made sure we ate. They made sure we did everything uh, <laughs> we needed to do. We – stretched a little more I mean that was just just getting off the plane you know riding by the stadium seeing and then you know the hurricane that went through so we seen a lot of trees on the ground everything so and that was a little sad and it was in a different neighborhood and everything you know Baton Rouge um that was that was probably one of the best stadiums I ever like seen other than like an NFL stadium pretty much but that was that was that was a great like Coach Max said it was gonna be fun, and it, it was fun. You know, you always want to come out with the win, any game you play. But that was a fun experience. You know, I, I still came in, and you know, um, always supportive of my teammate. That's, that's one thing. And uh, I just felt like I felt like as a team after the game, we came together and was like, uh, we got to make sure that from now on we just win every game. And Absolutely. that's that's really pretty much that's pretty much the goal. Absolutely. And you guys, you guys played really, really well against LSU. I mean, yeah. people thought, even people on the SEC network counted you guys out by like five touchdowns pregame and stuff like that. You guys held your own and that and that made yeah. Chippewa Nation very proud. And knowing to come home against Florida International, we were, you know, Chippewa Nation, it, you know, they were excited. And going against Florida International now, you know, I, like you said at the very beginning, it was one of the first schools that reached out to you. Now you're playing them at home in Kelly Shorts. Now, take me through. Now, the, you know, what was you know the transition like taking from what you guys learned from LSU on the road and putting in a good game plan together against FIU? I thought we started off a little slow, and like towards the end, we just Coach Mack at second half. He was just saying finish. And we came out as a team and we finished. That was pretty much the, the goal, just finishing. Just finish. And, and that's you know, what we did. Because a lot of a lot of chip, you know, a lot of chip nation, they looked you know, looking around like, okay, it's probably it's we're down three scores. It's you know, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to come back. And so you're on, you know, you're on the sidelines and stuff. So when did when did Coach Mack make the switch and said, you know what? That you know. Daniel, let's go. Let's go. You know. Well, I mean, around the end of the third quarter, he just said, uh, "Just be ready," and I just went in and just tried to help the team win. That's that's pretty much. Because Didn't try you, to do too much. Because you balled just, out. Just try. You balled yeah, out. Thank you. Hundred percent. You three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. It put put not only the Mac, you know, Mac team saying okay, and the Mac conference saying okay. Look at what Central Michigan just did. Look at what the Chippewas just did to come back. But the rest of the state and college football was like, was just wow. Was just wow. Look at what the Chippewas did to FIU. That was awesome. So now, after following this game against FIU, you guys are heading on the road to start MAC play against Miami, Ohio, then at Ohio. And then you have Toledo at home. So you guys got three Ohio teams in a row. So, yeah. so now focusing on this game against Miami, Ohio, you're just named the starter this week against Miami, Ohio. You, are you feeling, you, you know, you nervous about, you know, be, being the starter and overall, you know, how's, is the team really, really confident after last week's comeback, comeback? I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm never nervous. You know, I always been ready for, opportunity and, and that's what I that's what I do um the I've been taking it the same way even if I was the backup guys we still approach it the same way as we started and it don't matter who starts first you, you never know what can happen in the game anything can happen exactly. and it just always be ready 
And that's, that's what coach say, just always be ready, pretty much. And I mean, the team, I, we feel confident every week. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't say that. We confident every week. Yeah, I mean, you guys have you guys have your fantastic you have fantastic running backs. Your receivers are you know in Pimpleton, and the rest of your core are uh, and Sullivan are on you know are on point or in sync. You, you know, like you said, either with you or with Jacob, it doesn't matter. You know, they're in sync. The old line has protected you guys really, really well. I'm uh, and your deep the run defense has been awesome to watch as well. So. Pending in the Miami, Ohio, then Ohio, then Toledo, and then the rest of the MAC schedule with you know going to Kalamazoo and then having uh, Eastern Michigan at home for one of the last games that's going to be during the week, which is going to be a little weird to see. But yeah, you know how you know how are you feeling sitting at you know two and two right now, out of you know finished at five hundred out of conference uh, non conference play, heading into conference play. You think you you know you guys can you know run the table, go undefeated and Win this West yeah. Division. The the main goal is just taking one game at a time, and just playing the first game. So pretty much we just focusing on Miami Ohio, when being one to know. Like I said earlier, that that's what Coach been preaching, just being one to know every week, and focusing on the opponent that week. We're not looking past the next week and the week after. As long as we're working on the now, look forward to that. Just just zone in, focus on focus on the Red Hawks heading down there this week. It's gonna be. Yes. It's going to be an excellent game. You can catch that game on, ES, on ESPN Plus. And, you know, this, ga- this game along with the rest along on ESPN Plus and other networks as well. Daniel Richardson, D. Rich, I want to thank you so much. This thank is you. going to be the year. I tell you, this is going to be your West Division title, MAC title, full title. This is going to be it. I have a gut feeling with this team and this core. And, you know, you are, you leading the way. I have no doubts. Appreciate you. Thank I you. No, I have no doubts. So this Saturday, this this upcoming Saturday, October 2nd, Central Michigan at Miami, Ohio. Kickoff, kickoff time is at noon, right? Noon? 3.30. 3.30. Noon, kickoff is at 3.30. Catch it on ESPN Plus and catch this man under center, number 10 for the Chippewas, Daniel Richardson. D. Rich, thank you so much for coming on. I really, thank you. really appreciate it. Best of best of luck this week and the rest of the rest of the year. And hopefully, we get we get to meet each other at some point during the season. For sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Go kill for it sure. this week, sir. Thank you. Thank you, man. What a fantastic interview. Fantastic guy. Man, damn it. Man, what a fantastic interview, a fantastic guy. D. Rich, Daniel Richardson, coming from Miami, Florida to Central Michigan, experiencing the Michigan winners for the first time and um, all that stuff. And beating FIU, his first school that he got a recruitment offer from, and to come back in that fashion with three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. It's not, you can't write this. You can't script it. So... He is so two set the Chippewas. They said sit at two and two out of non conference play. They're heading to Miami, Ohio this week to face the Red Hawks at 3 30 p.m. You catch the game on ESPN Plus or any others, any other networks as well as the games being broadcasted. So, yeah, Chippewas are going to win the MAC. That's the whole thing. We're going to win the MAC. We're going to win the division. We're going to beat Western. We're going to, you know, beat Miami, Ohio first. That beat Western, beat Eastern, win the division, win the MAC, win a bowl game, and D, and it's just going to be D, D Rich takeover. So that will do it for the sixth episode of the final season of the Hot Seat Sports Talk. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, do whatever, make share, and make sure this show is going out on a high note. Um, also catch me on Unsportsmanlike Conduct from CM Life. You can find that under multimedia as well. I am the host of that podcast as well. That's what I'm going to be doing once I'm done with this show. But I'm still the host of this show. It's not going anywhere until we hit 50 guests and we hit our five-year mark. So that will do it for this episode, this installment. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Aaron Gemmel. And as always, keep it fresh.